So I want this to be a loving response. I want this to be a loving video in response to Glad's invite to Candace, but also a loving encouragement to Candace herself. But real quick, before I show you some of what's said in this article and what the invite entails, which is shocking. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. So you know how you watch all of my videos from start to finish and you like them and you never miss a single one of my videos, right? Then you would know that I posted a video a couple days ago called Candace Cameron Burr a, Bure, <laughs> I told you I was never going to get that right, responds to backlash, and it was basically about, she said on her new network called the Great American Family Network, that they were going to focus on traditional marriage, and she made it very clear that it was about faith and family. The relationships that are portrayed are going to be biblical relationships, you know, a man and a woman. And I also showed you the response that Candace gave to all the backlash she received from Hollywood, from celebrities. And so you can go check out that video to see that response and see my reaction to it. But you know, there's been another update to this story. Hey, I just wanna say real quick, we got some of our new merch out right now. This is one of my favorite shirts, Read the Bible. If you wanna support this channel, you can check out the link below. It says shop our merch. Hey, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know, when you like this video, YouTube will push it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. Jojo Siwa, who's been one of the most outspoken in Hollywood about not liking Candace Cameron Bure, said that Candace should accept Glad's conversation invite. And I'm going to show you more of this story in just a second, but I want to say that, you know, Candace Cameron got a lot of flack for sticking up for her faith. And she responded to it. And, well, you'll have to go watch the video to find out how I feel about her response. But GLAD, the leading LGB alliance, the organization that basically is always there to make sure that you're in line with accepting everything that they tell you to, invited Candace Cameron to come and have a conversation with them. And I'm going to show you some of the things they said. And it's very disturbing. You don't want to miss it. You know, I want this video to be an encouragement to Candace Cameron Bure. I want it to be something that can encourage her. You know, I doubt she's ever going to see this, but the thing is, is that I think it can encourage other believers as well to stand firm in God's truth and in God's word. And I think that it can spread when we encourage one another as the body of Christ. We can help uplift each other, encourage each other, and help each other to stay steadfast in truth. And that's what I hope this video does. And I'm going to give my reasons why Candace Cameron shouldn't play these games with Glad and shouldn't give in to these what I'll call trickery. And I also want to make a point that None of this is meant to make the LGB community submit to God's word. You know, the truth of God's word is, well, it's true. It is the truth. We can decide to follow it or not. This has nothing to do with forcing anybody that is a part of the LGB community to submit. No, this should be about lovingly sharing God's truth and allowing God's will to be done in their lives. So I want this to be a loving response. I want this to be a loving video in response to Glad's invite to Candace, but also a loving encouragement to Candace herself. So Jojo Siwa, who's been one of the most outspoken against Candace Cameron, for a while now. She actually said a few months ago, check out this article, that Candace Cameron Bure was the rudest celebrity that she's ever known. Why is this? Well, you put two and two together. 
Jojo Siwa over here is a part of the LGB community. She claims to be, I, I, I believe she claims to not be any sexual in orientation at all. She is a part of the create your own identity crowd and which completely goes against God's word. And she claims that, wait for it, the Christian celebrity is the rudest celebrity because <laughs> Candace Cameron hasn't completely given in to depravity. It's funny how that works. You know, I talked about my last video on Candace Cameron that the very fact that we represent God's truth and the very fact that we speak God's word is offensive. It doesn't matter how loving we speak. It's offensive to those who hate God. So there, there's nothing new under the sun here. But real quick, before I show you some of what's said in this article and what the invite entails, which is shocking, I want to encourage with some scripture. This is extremely important to see some scripture leading into using scripture as a defense to this invite that was given. So, you know, Jesus was tempted by Satan himself when Jesus was here on earth during his lifespan, you know, a couple thousand years ago. Satan tempted Jesus on three occasions here, directly to Jesus' face. And each time, you can read this in Matthew chapter 4. I won't go over all of it, but I want to show you how Jesus responded to Satan. Jesus responds every time Satan tempts him with scripture. So Satan tempts Jesus to make stones into bread, and Jesus responds with, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know the Bible is God-breathed? So Jesus responds with scripture from the Old Testament to rebuke Satan and his temptations. Satan then goes on to tempt Jesus to throw himself down, for it is written, now this is very cunning, Satan tries to use scripture to tempt Jesus. He twists the word of God to try to make it sound like something that, well, Jesus, you can do this for it is written. Very cunning, very deceptive, and it shows that not everybody that comes speaking scripture, the Bible also warns about this, not everybody that speaks scripture or speaks the truth is actually of God. They could be using it to twist the truth, to lead you to destruction. But after Satan tempts Jesus to throw himself down because the angels will protect him, Jesus responds again, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus uses scripture here to rebuke Satan. Again, Satan took Jesus on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world to tempt Jesus and said, I will give you these kingdoms if you bow before me and worship me just one time right here, right now. Worship me and you can have everything. Jesus responds and says, Be gone, Satan, for it is written. Do you see this? Again, using scripture. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 with me as well, starting in verse 12. Indeed. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. You know, all these negative reactions and all this hatred being poured out towards Candace Cameron for sticking up for God's word, this is nothing new. The Bible tells us that we will be persecuted. We will be hated for living a godly life in Christ Jesus. In verse 13 says, While evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. This is also the part when you go on that says all scripture is God breathed. Now check this out. Look what the Bible says people will do to believers. This is in 2 Peter chapter 2. And many will follow their sensuality. People are going to be driven by their lusts, by their sensuality for the flesh. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. Do you see these people that are driven by their sensuality will blaspheme the truth. 
and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. You know, what's going on with Candace is the world blaspheming the truth and trying to exploit her with false words words, making all kinds of accusations against her, which I'll share with you in just a second, but their condemnation is from long ago. It's not idle. This has been going on forever, and it will never be done with until the Lord returns. Their destruction will not sleep. It will never end. One last scripture real quick. Check this out in Isaiah chapter 5, starting in verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know, that's going on in our culture right now. You have so many people that are saying, hey, taste this, and you lick it, and you go, oh, that is so bad bitter. Oh, that tastes disgusting. I don't want anything to do with that. But they say, surely it's not bitter. It's it's actually sweet. Go ahead, give it another lick. And mm, you taste it and it still tastes bitter. But no, they assure you what you are tasting is actually sweet and it tastes so good, doesn't it? And so you keep going back for more taste because they won't relent. And as you continue to taste, you start to tell yourself, actually, this is sweet. It does taste sweet. And you find yourself wanting more of this this bitterness because you have allowed yourself to become just as depraved as they are because you didn't fight against the destruction, against the temptation. Instead, you gave into it because it was easier in that moment. Don't trick yourself. Bitter is bitter. Sweet is sweet. Light is the light and darkness is the darkness. You cannot have light in the darkness. You flip a light switch, the darkness disappears. Did you know that we're called to be a light in a dark world and we shouldn't hide our light? The Bible says don't put a basket over your light. Don't hide your light. When we shine the light of God's truth, it wipes away the darkness. So we shouldn't be afraid to let our light shine in this dark world. So Jojo Seawall told People over the weekend that she and Candace Cameron haven't spoken since Bure, the chief creative officer for the television network Great American Family, said that the network would keep traditional marriage at the core. So they haven't spoken. So Jojo Seawall is from the show Dance Moms. It goes on, Jojo Seawall is a 19-year-old singer-dancer who identifies as Pan Sejawal believes that she can use her voice for something good and to change the world for the better. Again, do you remember the scripture I said, good will be called evil and evil will be called good? So Jojo said, I am being honest and maybe a little disruptive to somebody's life, but it's what I believe in. Referring to her public dressing down of Bure. And so to have good people stand behind you with it felt really nice. She's talking about when she called Candace Cameron Bure, one of the rudest people, I guess, ever. Seawall previously called Bure the rudest celebrity she had ever met. So Seawall said, we have not talked and I don't think we ever will again. Seawall said, that's what is bad word up. So Seawall went on to say, you not liking gay marriage? Do your thing, girl. You being religious? Do your thing, girl. Of course, I would want everybody to do what they want to do, but however, Listen to Seawall's finish to this because it's not really about wanting people to do what they want to do. It's about people conforming to a certain idea. She finishes it with this, but to purposefully exclude someone because of who they love, that's bad word. So again, this comes down to them framing this as Bure purposefully excluding people, not about upholding God's truth. Everything seems to be going the way of including a certain narrative, whether you like it or not. So if we just had one thing over here and the world can have the rest of it, that's not good enough because the world wants that one thing that you have. They will always want that one thing. It'll never be enough. That's why we can never give in. Not even just a little bit. We cannot give in because they'll always want more and more and more. So the CEO of GLAAD, you know, the uh, organization that stands up for 
the LGB community, invited Buer to have a conversation with her in a tweet last week saying, It's irresponsible and hurtful for Candace Cameron Buer to use tradition as a guise for exclusion. You see, they're trying to explain it away as you're just stuck in an old fuddy-duddy mindset that isn't actually real. You need to get with the times. And it's unfair, it's irresponsible, and it's hurtful that you would use your tradition as a disguise for exclusion. She goes on, I would love to have a conversation with Bure about my wife, our kids, and our family's traditions. So again, if I could just get you into a room to where I can indoctrinate you, then you'll fall in line. That's what it always comes down to. Ellis continued, Bure is out of sync. Of course, it always comes down to being out of sync. Hey, get with the times, remember? Bure is out of sync with a growing majority of people of faith, including LGB people of faith, who know that LGB couples and families are deserving of love and visibility. As the company's chief creative officer, her statement is harmful and insulting to LGB employees, as well as employees with LGB friends and family. See, it's there's never going to be enough. If you didn't insult someone personally, then there's someone somewhere down the line that you're insulting, so you must submit. Ellis urged viewers to reconsider their involvement with the network that would intentionally exclude stories about LGB couples. Then actors... Advertisers, cable and streaming platforms, and production companies should take note and seriously consider whether they want to be associated with a network that holds exclusion as one of its values. You see what's going on here. The GLAAD CEO is basically calling out every actor, advertiser, cable company, streaming platform, and production company saying, if you work with this network, then you're a bigot. You are a part of the issue. You are a part of the exclusion and we will come after you and destroy you. And so basically if Candace Cameron and the new network doesn't submit to GLAAD, then they want them to be destroyed. This is why we cannot give a little bit because they will take everything from us. If we continue to give in, they will take everything. They will not stop until you are destroyed. Do we not get it yet? And then Siwa said, check this out. Jojo Siwa said that she wants Bure to take Ellis up on her invitation and have a conversation with Glad. Now Jojo Siwa is concerned about Bure in, in, in what way? And then Siwa said, Glad is such an incredible organization. Sarah is a genius. When it comes to the J community, Seawall said, and I think that Candace having a conversation with her would be not only eye-opening to Candace, but eye-opening to a whole world of people who might have those same beliefs. So Seawall, who calls Bure one of the most rudest people that she's ever met in the world and constantly is bagging on Bure's beliefs and hates God and hates Christianity and believes that that mindset of exclusion, basically if you have a mindset that follows the word of God, then you're excluding people. Even though the word of God is the most welcoming and most loving words you will ever hear. Now, Jojo wants to turn around and encourage Bure to just come and have a conversation. You know, this isn't how it should work. Candace, do not give in to this. There is no reason to go and have a conversation with Glad unless you plan on only using scripture to rebuke the deception that they will try to hurl against you. It is a trap. It is meant to make you submit or be destroyed. This is not a game we should be playing with the world. So Candace, again, as I said in my last video, stand strong in the word of God. We have your back. I am rooting for you. And I pray that you would stand firm in the word of God and that God would bless you and that his will would ultimately be done and that your new network would stand firm in faith 
and truth. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts about all this. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and be a part of this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know when you like this video, YouTube will push it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. And come meet me over on Patreon if you'd like to get to know each other on a more personal level. You can find my Patreon linked in the description below. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.